because that's really what people need. So welcome in, y'all. Today, we're talking about five things. When it comes to toning up your belly, five things you need to avoid in order to tone your belly up and really not make the mistake that a lot of people probably, most people make when it comes to toning up, right? Five things recovering are detoxing, recovering the sweat, the sweat bands and waist trainers. We're covering starving yourself, i.e. not eating enough. We're going to be covering that fruit and water diet. I've been seeing a lot of that. And um, it's, yeah, we're going to be covering the fruit and water diet. And then we're going to be talking about how much you should actually work out. At the end, we'll have Q&A. So if you have questions that pop up in your head as you're going through this, even if you're watching the replay, you can still drop questions in about certain things you have. I'm going to see those. If for some reason I don't, just tag me on Facebook. And um, I'll jump back in. I'll answer that, whatever that question is. Or it might be a good question for like a live topic, right? Um, so without further ado, y'all, we're going to jump in. Now, the first thing that you need to not be doing when it comes to toning your belly up, you don't have to detox and or cleanse, all right? This has more of an effect of what I like to call sweeping things, sweeping the main problem under the rug, right? This is even very synonymous with uh, that fruit and water that we're going to talk about later. But when we go for these detoxes and these cleanse versus cleansing our habits, right, it makes it hard for us to maintain what we got. So like we'll have like a cruise coming up or a vacation, maybe a girl trip or whatever, and we want to detox. And when we try to detox, we're essentially not allowing our body to we're not really we're not allowing our brain to function the way it's going to tell us to, hey, let's develop better habits so we don't have to cleanse again in the future. Right. So instead of detoxing and cleansing, I'm going to give you all a little sneak peek. And we might even run this challenge next week. If y'all want to run like a, a proper detox challenge next week, like let me know. We, we could do that, get, get some motivation because we're about to jump into July. And I think that would be a pretty cool challenge. We did it before and people really kind of kickstart some things off of that. I think it would be pretty cool. Um, but just let me know. I'll, I'll play that by ear with y'all. But you don't have to detox. You don't have to cleanse. The best thing you can really do to detoxify your body is, one, cut the BS. And if you know what kind of BS that you're eating that you need to cut out and or stop doing or stop drinking, uh, take an emoji on your phone and I want you to comment what that thing is that you need to cut out. So if you need to stop eating fried food, maybe comment like a the, the fry emoji or if you need to stop, um, I don't know, eating pizza, comment a pizza emoji or let's say you need to stop and drink alcohol, comment the beer emoji, okay? Oh, by the way, next month I'm doing Dry July, which includes 4th of July, and I had these plans with my uh, my brother and everything. We're going out with the kids somewhere. And I was like, dang, that means I can't drink there either. <laughs> but I'm doing dry July. But if you got things you need to cut out, y'all, um, you come with that emoji. I'm curious what, what y'all struggle with. Because we all, we all struggle with something, right? But going back to the point, the first thing you need to avoid is you got to avoid detox. All right? Detoxing, like, it's cute. It's cool. But it doesn't last. Like, all the time. I've, I've had a lot of consultations in my time, like thousands. And I always talk about the, you know, oh, they'll say, oh, yeah, I did a detox and everything. You know, it was really good start. Okay, cool. And what did you do before that? Well, before that, I was doing X, Y, and Z. Okay. And what did you do after that? Well, after that, I kind of just, like, I fell off. Right. Exactly. And that is why I'm not a big proponent of detoxing. Now, are there proper ways to detox your body? There certainly are. And we can dive into what those are um, on another live. But, y'all, the best detox you can do, go drink some water eat fruits, eat vegetable, eat protein, right? Just eat whole some food. That means non-processed food, right? It's not packaged and everything like that. If you do that, I promise you, your body will detox. But most of the time we have junk in your body, it's probably from the weekend, right? Going out, having fun on the weekend. We're not going to go down that whole weekend, that weekend warrior rabbit hole. We did that um, during the Lose Your Stomach Masterclass. Um, but y'all, just drink some water, okay? <laughs> Flush that stuff out and stop, stop all of these little detoxes. I've seen somebody pay for like, Five hundred dollars for like a four day detox, and they got sent like six juices and stuff. I looked at the ingredients. I was like, it's like twenty bucks. You could have went to Walmart, and it's oh, it gets it gets scary out there. But let's get into the second thing. The second thing you need to stop doing when it comes to toning up your belly is stop wearing the sweatbands and stop wearing the waist trainers. All right, um, you don't need them. Like you actually generally don't need them. It's going to be a small point, but anatomically, let's start with some science first, right? Anatomically, you already have a band. I'm not going to go too deep into it. I want you to research what is called your transverse abdominis. Think, think about the word transfer and replace the F with a V, right? Transverse abdominis. You have that. It's, it's literally a built-in weight belt. So if you ever wondered like why your organs just don't spill out, right? Just fall to your floor, fall to the floor at your stomach. 
is because you have a weight belt that is inside behind your abdominals called a transverse abdominus. And there's a way you can actually work and train this in order to tighten up your weights. This is actually like one of my little secret hacks. Like this, if I were to have any kind of secret hack to a, a slim tone belly, this is actually probably one. So look up and look up on uh you can look up on YouTube, transverse abdominus. You can look up uh what do we call it? Deep expiration, like expire, deep expiration. You can look at tummy vacuum exercises. Look at those things. Um, you'll see a lot of this kind of uh, deep core work in yoga poses, right? Um, it's a lot of breathing work, okay? But start to look at um, not wearing the waistband and the waist trainers, but more so look at what is actually under there called your transverse abdominus. Now, this is helpful, y'all. I see about we have 11 people here, and I don't see y'all chiming in. Y'all must be taking notes off y'all phone. If y'all doing that, then, hey, that's great. I see Johnson pops in here, Anaya's in here. Justin just jumped in. Nicole. Oh, Nicole, we talked uh, about, what was that, 30 days ago or so? How's everything going? How's your process going for the chat? Is, is this helpful, y'all? Give me like a fire emoji or something. Let me know it's helpful. But if it's not helpful, then I can, just, I can stop right here and, and go back to my notes and figure something else out. Or maybe Facebook froze my comments again. Let me see. I don't know. I think Facebook might have froze my comments because, hmm. Yeah, y'all are... Uh, let me see 14 comments now. Okay, there we go. Now I see Johnson comments in. Okay. All right, got it. Cool. So another thing with the waist trainers, y'all, when we have waist trainers on and sweatbands, um, one thing is when you're exercising in the gym, um, you're actually doing your core a disservice because it's bracing you in. I, I just reloaded my comments for some reason. It's like, I don't know, it keeps doing its things. So I'm gonna I'm gonna refresh it every two, three minutes to make sure it's populating, but Facebook does all the time. Like it, it just it just stops the comment section. <laughs> I don't know what heck, what heck happens with that. But um with the uh, oops, wrong button. But when we're doing a, a waist trainer, right? You already have a core that's holding you nice and strong, right? You have to work that specifically. Now, could you warm up with a waist trainer on? You definitely could. Um, but I would always take it off during exercise, right? Because there's different ways, and I'm not going to go too detailed because this is a it's a deeper conversation. Uh, so definitely research those things that I told you about. But when you have your uh your core without the waist trainer, right, you're actually working your core now. That that core it braces you for you. There's core bracing techniques when you're working out that can really help to uh, strengthen your core overall. That waist trainers can really take away from. Um, and if you're somebody who can't do a sit up properly, right, or like leg raises or you can't even like uh, do like an in and out where your legs are suspended out. You can't hold that. You got a weak core. And a part of that, honestly, is your waist trainer because it's helping stabilize you a lot. So take it off. Actually work your core so you can get stronger the right way. And as far as like sweatbands and stuff, now saunas and stuff like that, the hot yoga, hot this, that, and third, it is good for you to sweat. Okay? It is good for you to sweat. One, it can release a lot of toxins in your body, a lot of toxins inside of your body. Two, your body, it's, this means your body has the ability to cool off. Now, if you did not sweat, that would be a problem because that means your body's overheating and your cool, your AC don't work. That's basically what it is. And that's dangerous, right? If you ever had your car overheat, I've had my overheat like a long time ago. But uh, if you ever had your car overheat, it's the same thing with your body. Um, but sweat is not the indicator. It's not even an indicator you're working hard. It's just an, it's simply an indicator that you're hot. Like it's hot in the mud, right? That's all sweat is indicating. Um, but the way that you actually are knowing that you're toning up and losing fat, don't focus on the sweat so much. Focus on being out of breath. And I know it sounds it can sound a little painful sometimes, right? But focus more so on being out of breath. Sorry, I did probably echo back there. I'm trying to reload these. Uh, trying to reload these comments here. There we go. Um, but yeah, focus more so on being out of breath. If you know how to lose, how you lose fat, I want to know that. Like, just give me like a thumbs up in the comments. Do you actually know how your body loses fat? It actually, I learned this about three and a half or so years ago. I didn't know. I thought it was just like, you know, you lose fat from just like working hard. And um, I knew it wasn't sweat. I thought it was just like the way you like when you urinate and, when you know, you know, you got the runs. I thought that's like where your fat left at. And I, I found out that's only where some of it leaves it. But actually, it's about 85 uh, percent. Somebody fact check me. But I think about 85 percent of the, the uh, fat that we lose actually comes from just every time you exhale. Now, don't walk around, y'all, and just be a, and don't, don't walk around doing that. If Kira's still here, I know she probably be, she, she be joking around y'all all the time. Jocelyn, you too. But don't walk around just like breathing heavy, okay? But 
you're basically when you put your body into an oxygen deficit, right, through like hard work at the gym, that's when you burn fat. All right. That's when you burn like a lot of your fat. But then also uh, when you're in a caloric deficit, your body has to compensate for not having as many calories inside of you. OK, that's another way that you burn fat. But the most interesting thing is that we lose, we actually burn fat literally from just like blowing our hot breath everywhere in people's faces. Um, but that's enough about sweatbands and waist trainers. You don't need them. Okay. I personally haven't worn them. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, I mean, you will, you, you see what I look like. And that's just the best way I can put that. I haven't worn them ever. Uh, the third thing that you need to do when avoiding mistakes to lose your belly is don't starve. Like literally don't starve. I'm going to give you a personal story. I'm going to tell you more about a little bit about clients um, I've worked with, but like starving yourself is literally the worst way to lose the belly, right? Tone up. And what happens is we, we get this thing in our head. We, we first, we research like how to tone up on TikTok or Instagram or something, maybe YouTube, or we ask our friends, your friends may say something like, oh, you just need to like literally stop eating or go fasting girl, or try intermittent mean, this, or did you try keto? Or did you do uh try the fruit and water thing, right? Basically, people point you to all things. Oh, and then we finally stumble upon the caloric deficit, right? Magical thing. And then what happens is we get to the point where we try all these things and we're literally starving, right? We're not eating enough food. And we don't, we get to the point where we don't eat enough food because now we're just like, all right, well, this said caloric deficit and it said you need to eat less than you burn. So I'm going to just burn this much, but I'm going to eat like this much right here and I'm going to lose all this fat. Because then we, we find that little figure, that little equation out there where it says, Oh, if you burn 3,500 calories over in, a, in a deficit every week, you're going to lose one pound. And we're like, okay, shoot. What if I burn 10,000? Your body doesn't work like that, y'all. It, is, it doesn't work like that, okay? Um, so if you're starving yourself, if you are currently on a weight loss journey, if you're trying to tone up, and let me also signify that. Toning up, weight loss journey, I'm trying to lose fat. Y'all, those are all the same thing, all right? Um, if you're losing fat, you're, you're overall losing weight. If you're trying to tone up, toning up means I'm getting rid of my, uh, fat on my body, which means I'm dropping some form of weight. Okay. It was all the same thing. Let's make sure we're clear on that. But um, what was I talking about? Oh, but when you starve yourself and you drive that deficit way too large, right? It actually stresses your body out. So metabolic stress is actually a thing. Nutritional stress is actually a thing because when you are starving like that, you probably have um, more higher moodiness. You have trouble sleeping or staying up late at night. Your cravings kick in, usually not in the morning, but like late at night. Um, you tend to overeat, you overindulge on weekends, right? Um, that time of the month comes on and cravings really skyrocket. Like your body's going to do what it needs to do to put you back at um, basic state. And if the problem is we'll starve ourselves like four days a week, maybe Monday through Friday. And then we'll be like, well, I didn't eat this much anyway this week. So I can have some fun on the weekend. And then we weekend very, very hard. Um, and this always puts you back at square one. So one personal thing with me is when I did my first show in 2018, I was actually amazed at the amount of um, calories I had to eat. So I had, this is my first time. I wasn't certified nutrition at the time, but uh, she told me, she was like, hey, you're going to need to eat about 2,800 calories starting off. And as we get close to the show, I'm going to drop it down to about 2,500 calories. And I'm like, but to, to lose weight, right? Like, you right? Because me, I had always like would cut weight at like 1,900 or so, maybe 2,000 calories. Um, based on my output, but she put me at like 2,800. I was like, all right, well, I'm going to do what you say. And it actually worked, like shredded as hell. And I was like, oh, even I wasn't eating enough, right? And I wasn't even a proponent of like starving myself. Um, but what it showed me was like, it gave me a lot of perspective. And from that point, that's when I got certified in nutrition to learn like a lot more about these things. And then I understood like, oh, okay, you actually don't need to be starving yourself. And I was actually really just today talking to a client um, she got started like uh, actually no she got started today but so just talking to a, to a client and she mentioned like yeah you know i do like 50 minutes cardio and then i'll go and uh i'll do my weighted workout for like you know 45 minutes to an hour and i'm like okay so you're and she was splitting those the cardio in the morning like long session and then exercise during de during the uh, evening time okay so you're doing like two hours of workout a day four or five times a week i'm looking at your health questionnaire you said you don't eat a lot Right. And, and body weight stuff showed us reflected that she, you know, she was telling the truth. But I'm like, uh, and this might be a lot of our problem too. You're in your, you're in the gym, you're working out. Like going to the gym, a lot of times with ladies that work inside of a program, um, going to the gym is not really the issue. The issue is y'all guys don't eat. <laughs> like if you want to lose weight, you need to eat. If you want to tone your body up, you need to eat. 
if you want to gain weight, you need to eat, right? But the caveat to that is consistency. You got to do the basis, which is eat because you're a human being who needs a function. You got to eat consistently because when it's inconsistent like that, your body doesn't, it doesn't know what to do. And so we get to this point where we work, 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 work so hard in the gym and you might be eating enough, but you're working so hard in the gym and burning so many calories that you're driving that deficit so large to the point your body is super stressed out. And because your body's super stressed out, you actually burn less in the gym because the body likes to reserve its energy so it can just maintain brain function, right? Maintain your organs function so you can go piss properly. Um, your body has to maintain those things. It's called homeostasis, right? I see Tyler Titus just jumped in here. That's my line brother, y'all. He was a uh, bio premium major, so you can fact check me on that. But the body's always going to try to regulate where we're at, okay? And you need to be fueling yourself. So if you are somebody who you work out a lot, like being in the gym is no problem, you're not seeing results. I promise you, if you start eating more of the right stuff, then you're going to see a lot more results, all right? Um, but just get back to the basics. If you're not eating enough, start eating enough and keep on moving. If you're eating enough, but you're not moving enough, keep eating enough and start moving enough, right? Very simple thing. Now, the fourth thing, and this is, this is guys, I've seen this on, uh, you know, all the little pages, the shade room and some viral people. But um, the fruit and water diet, I ain't going to spend too much time on this, y'all, but stop. Just stop. If, if, you, if you're doing that, just take, take your neck right here, all right? Warm it up. And just, just stop that. And if you need me to do it for you, I'll do it for you. But stop doing that. If you've been following me for a while, for if you've been following me for more than a week, <laughs> so I have a lot of, I have a ton of content about this stuff. Uh, stop doing that. I better not catch you. Good. If I see you talking about fruit and water cleanse, you, you might hear me knocking at your door and don't ask how I got your address. Just know that I got it. All right. But the problem with that fruit and diet, the fruit and water diet, y'all, in all seriousness, is your body, um, as a human, you need three main macronutrients to function carbs, fats, and proteins. All right. And, you know, I hear, oh, well, what about keto? And what about, you know, that look, I, y'all, I've been doing this thing for a long time. Um, no, keto has a three to five percent success rate. I, I looked into it. I also tried for myself for eight weeks. Um, does it work? Yeah. Can you do it? Probably not. Um, but the big thing about the fruit and water diet, people are doing it. Oh, it's just a little cleanse. Problem with it is, unless directed by a registered dietitian or a nutritionist, um, you don't need to be doing that stuff. Stop self-diagnosing yourself with these things. I've literally had um, clients I work with that did stuff like this, and then they went to the doctor, and like they literally got hospitalized. They went to the doctor, and the doctor was like, all your levels are off. What did you do? And like, well, I did this fruit and water diet. And our doctor's just like, oh. right? So don't do that, y'all, okay? Because you're probably going to be vitamin D deficient, vitamin C deficient, get sick as hell, uh, develop something. like Somebody actually, I don't even remember what the condition was, but somebody actually ended up developing some chronic from it. So like, y'all, don't do these extreme things, especially when they come from, and you know, I'm dropping shade, but especially when they come from people who are not certified, credentialed, don't have even proof of like an evidence of the work they've done with other people. Stop doing that stuff. All right. But it's missing protein. It's missing healthy fats. Women, especially, y'all have so much when it comes to hormones that's going on in your body. And when we do stuff like a fruit and water diet and literally devoid our body of fats. Like you, your body actually needs fats. Cutting fats is actually the worst way to lose weight. Um, but when your body is, oh, that's actually what happened. Somebody I talked to, they did something like this and they cut the fats out of their body like completely. And they actually like literally destroy the gallbladder. Your, your gallbladder helps you break down and or emulsify fats when you're eating. They actually destroyed its function and they had to get the gallbladder removal surgery because of that, right? So your body needs the three main macronutrients, your carbs, your fats, and your protein. So don't go on these little cleanse diets that you see. One, without consulting a doctor, they're going to tell you, no, don't do that. But two, you're human. You got to eat food. Refer to mistake number three that people make. Now, this is helpful stuff. Let me know. I'm going to be refreshing this chat. I feel like, you know, people are talking here, but Facebook is just not letting me be great. It's, this is one of those lives where Facebook just does not populate what people are saying inside the uh, the chat box. Um, I see Justin here. Let me see. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There we go. Pop it back up. But the fifth and the final thing, y'all, and this is my favorite one because it actually catches a lot of people off guard. But, um, Working out more than five times a week, you, you don't have to. Um, collectively, and I could put this personally, so I've worked out for almost 15 years of my life so far. 
Um, and quick side, if you have kids, get them active, y'all. It's it, there's so many benefits of getting your kids active and into like the whole fitness thing now. Just sweating, moving the body, eating healthy. Because think about like, do you want your kid to have to go through like a whole process of like dreading their body, the mirror, and not knowing you know what a carb, fat, and a protein is? Or uh, I don't want your kid to go through all that. I don't. Right. So yes, I'll make them do a couple push-ups and squats, but. I'll teach them why, <laughs> right? But um, the thing is, y'all, I've been working out. I've been active since I was, I would say, 10 sports-wise. Um, working out, lifting weights and stuff since I was 15. So really, I could probably say I've been active for like 20 years. Um, exercise, like intense exercise-wise since I was 15. So we'll say like 15, 20 years, right? But out of that timeline, there's only been a collective about six, eight months where I've ever done more than five workouts a week. Like literally, um, that includes playing sports in high school. There's only a collective like six, eight months where I've done like two times of uh, workouts a week. Most recent being back in 2018 when I did that uh, physique show. I was working out eight to nine times a week for an eight week period. Other than that, I don't like I don't do that. Uh, one, I don't want to. Uh, two, I don't have time for, like that in my schedule anymore. And you know, I'm an adult. I got responsibilities. I got bills. Like I got things I have to do that you know are more. Well, I'll be honest. Like I have fun working out, but I also have more fun doing other things. And that includes not being in the gym 24-7. Uh, but you don't have to work out five times a week. Like, literally, you could get away with three times a week. Um, you could five times a week your way to your goal, but just understand, like, once you get there, you are going to have, like, a, a, a borderline. Like, for me, if I only got three workouts in during a week in the gym, I'm okay with that, right? Like, this it's not the end of the world. That's not going to discredit the past 15 to 20 years of activity I've had in my life. It is just it doesn't, it doesn't work like that, right? Things change. Life comes in seasons. So, like, remember that. But another thing is, like, we'll, we will overwork ourselves in the gym, and we're actually going to wrap up here. So if y'all have any questions and answers, uh, or any questions I have answers, get ready to uh, drop those into the chat, or you can just start dropping them now. Facebook comments are kind of doing some weird stuff with this live feed. I don't know why, so I'm going to refresh this once I finish this point and jump back into that. If this is helpful for you, by the way, I do have another master class that I did about losing your stomach. Um, it's completely different topics than we are talking about here. If you want that, uh, just comment, lose your stomach below, and I will uh, send that link over to you so you can actually check out that class too. Um, but going back to not working out five times a week, we tend to use working out more and more and more as an excuse to eat poorly. I made this mistake when I was about, I want to say 15. When I was 15, I literally was like, uh, I, I knew nothing about exercise and nutrition by the way i just i like i knew a little bit how to lift weights because they were teaching us but even after going through like a nutritional seminar they have for all the senior football players back in high school i was still like the hell is he talking about <laughs> but i was also in the grocery store, i was like how do you cook this stuff like, I'm like what brown rice and chicken and 200 grams like how do you how do you know it's 200 grams like, I, I was i know what the hell hell's going on um but until you dial into your nutrition all the way you don't really need to, need to work out so much. I call it running from your problems. We work out a lot because we run from the true problem, which is what the hell you're putting in your mouth uh, on the weekends, during the night when you're craving something, right? So if we could just dial into that consistently, you'll get results, right? And like a lot of times when ladies sign up my um, new year elite program, uh, the first thing we'll talk on nutrition. And I'll just like, hey, let's, let's set an expectation right here, right now. Um, based on your questionnaire that you filled out, uh, you need to eat. Like, you just don't eat. Like, if you eat, you're going to get results. And it's like, well, how much is, like, don't even worry about how much. Just go eat. Like, go eat food. And then do it consistently, at least three times a day. And now as you're doing that, let's get to four. And now as you're doing that, let's maintain that for, like, a month or two. And now as you've done that, we can get five maybe on your leg day. And now as you've done that, all right, let's look at how much protein you're getting. In. And now let's make sure, let's look at how much protein you're getting in consistently and now let's do that consistently for like six to 12 months all right now that you're working out consistently and dialing in and get your protein consistently and not overindulging your calories now let's look at how many carbs and fats you're getting y'all you, you see where i'm getting with that so it's literally just the basics um i don't think my um my former client well she's still she's not my personal client anymore she's at the group now but she did a year with me and we did until we got to about the eight month point in malik williams uh that's when we started dialing into like actually counting calories and uh, the protein and stuff like that right so then literally building strength make sure you're eating enough fueling yourself make sure your tummy don't hurt you're not bloated 
that's all we focused on drink water like literally that was it and we got a lot of results right she's crushing it now um another thing too is that you know we we tend to under report what we actually do right and pay attention to reporting bias this is kind of like a bonus tip too when it comes to toning your belly but pay attention to reporting bias this means that your watch might say, hey, Jeremy, you burnt um, a thousand calories with this workout. I don't have a watch, but it might say, hey, you burnt a thousand calories with your workout. A lot of y'all might not know, but the way that your watch actually tracks your caloric uh, burn is from a satellite, which is like thousands of miles up in the air. It tracks that um, It tracks that with that. And uh, that's how it monitors your movement to calculate about how many calories you burn. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of variation with how much you actually burn there, right? The most accurate actually track your calorie burn. If you get a heart rate monitor and strap it to your chest, that's like the most accurate. They have some Amazon. Don't have a link for it right now, but that's the most accurate to track your uh, your core burn. It's gonna be much different than your watch, but there are some that also sync to your watch too out there. Um, and I'm not plugging one in. I, I don't. I'm not sponsored by them. Maybe I should get sponsored. Y'all know you know a plug. Let me know. But um, <clears throat> we tend to underreport how much we do. Um, when it comes to how much we eat, how much we actually burn. One thing I like to do, like if my watch were to say, I burned a thousand calories today, all right, I'm going to assume in my head, I burned 700. If my little app said, hey, I ate 2000 today, I'm going to presume, I'm going to take that 2000 and be like, all right, I'm going to go for 1800 because there's a lot of reporting by just hidden calories and figures that we just, we just don't know, right? Sometimes you wake up on the wrong side of the bed and because of that, your body doesn't absorb everything you eat. Sometimes you wake up on the right side of the bed, your body does absorb a lot, right? You do burn a lot. Or sometimes you didn't get enough sleep because you didn't get enough sleep. You did a workout that you think burns you a thousand calories, but you move slower and less effectively because you didn't get enough sleep, right? There's a lot of bias and wiggle room that comes into there. So don't be so like so much on the numbers. Like really start to dial into that process of like how you feel as well, too. Um, and understand that we underreport our calories eaten right on average by like 1200 and we also uh over report how much we actually burn and this is what keeps a lot of people in this is this weird spot where it's like you're working out hard and you feel like you're eating right but you're not seeing progress right that's one of the things now if anybody has any questions that's it for me i'm about to jump in and look at these things see if anything popped up because you know facebook is funny like that but we're about to get ready to wrap up here let me see any recent comments on here and my phone froze all right, here, lose your stomach, Justin. Shot. Okay, I'm going to make sure y'all get linked to that. Okay, I don't see any questions in here, so I'm going to take that as I did a really good job. Y'all, I'm going to get these kids ready for bed. Um, so if you have questions that pop up after this, or maybe they populate after the live, if they did, my mistake, I will definitely jump in. I'll answer that stuff for you. But uh, I need to get dinner started up. Um, I appreciate y'all jumping in, staying attentive throughout this time. If you find yourself helpful, invite a friend to the group because they're going to be going live a lot more. Uh, just got word that John finished the. Um, the five free workouts as well too so you'll be hearing from him pretty soon as well um has some tech difficulties with youtube and getting stuff uploaded here and there but um yeah that's pretty much it y'all i appreciate that um invite friends to the group you know let them know hey look like if you've been struggling with weight loss and tone up your body you're trying to get right for the summer even though summer starts tomorrow unfortunately i can't unbe their back by tomorrow but you know we'll try our best uh point of this group shoot them an invite tell them to answer the uh, agree to the rules and answer the questions because i don't want any spam people up in here as well but that's pretty much it i'll see you on the next live that we do just look up at an announcement and yeah y'all have a good night peace i don't end this uh oh